so excited today to interview my business mentor, Amy Porterfield, and her husband, Hobie Porterfield. Amy Porterfield is an ex-corporate girl turned online marketing expert and CEO of a multi-million dollar business. During her corporate days, Amy worked with mega brands like Harley Davidson, as well as peak performance coach, Tony Robbins. After one fateful boardroom meeting and witnessing the lifestyle, financial, and work freedom an online business has to offer, Amy developed her nine to five exit plan and never looked back. Today, we're going to be talking about her new book, Two Weeks Notice. On the surface, this book is about building an online business. Dig a little deeper and you'll soon discover this book is about defining what success looks like for you and taking action to make your version of the good life a reality. Today, I have Hobie and Amy Porterfield here to discuss what the good life looks like for them and how they built it together after Amy left her nine to five corporate job and went out on her own. Hello, welcome, Amy and Hobie. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah. We we don't you normally interview together, so this is so fun. Oh, I am so so grateful, Hobie. I just want you to know how appreciative I am as <laughs> someone who has a husband who also likes to support from behind the scenes. I understand how huge this is, so I really appreciate you. No worries. No worries. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fun. We'll start with a super easy question because everybody loves a good love story. I just want to set the stage for everyone. So can you tell us the story of how the two of you met and what you were both doing for work at the time? Oh, this is a fun story. Do you want me to start? Go ahead. Okay. So long story short, I used to work for Tony Robbins, peak performance coach. And when I was there, we had a small leadership team that we used to travel together and do a bunch of stuff together. And I became really good friends with one of the gals on the leadership team. She was head of HR. So I would go up to her office at lunch hour and she'd have a picture of her husband on her little board. And I used to always say, your husband's so hot. Like I would tell her this all the time, <laughs> very inappropriate. She was head of HR, but I couldn't help myself. So I would talk to her about her husband all the time. Little did I know that they didn't necessarily have the best marriage at the time. And about a year after that, she got a divorce. And I was going through a really bad breakup and she called me and she said, I'm setting you up with my ex-husband, which <laughs> is Hobie Porterfield. So Tracy Porterfield was my very good girlfriend, still is. And she set me up with Hobie and the rest is history. Yeah, the rest was history. It was a very awkward start. And we ne I never told any of my friends that already knew Tracy before about how we met until we'd been together for a year. For some reason, my brain told me a year was like... <laughs> it was, okay. was kind of awkward for him to tell everyone that knew him as a married man, but I told everyone because I loved it. Um, but uh, we've been married 15 years now. And at the time, so I was working for Tony Robbins as the director of content development. And I was a general contractor. Yeah. So I had started my own business too. So I, 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 was a, I did remodels and, and a lot of additions and stuff. That's what I did. Yeah. Very fun. I love it. So first question is for Hobie. What was it like for you, for Amy to be working in corporate like that? Mm. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> I, I would say interesting because I was kind of in my previous marriage, my wife was already in corporate America. So when I met Amy, that was kind of all I knew. But mm. then when she started coming home with ideas, about things she wanted to do, I was way more already like, I think you should try this. Like you wanted me out of 100%, corporate. 100% I wanted her out of corporate. Yeah. Because she, of the really, long hours or what? That was a big part of it. And always answering to somebody else and always being controlled as to what she could and couldn't do when I knew she had great ideas, but they were, you know, sometimes they just weren't received, so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's for somebody else is tough. And I had been working for myself at that point. So I kind of knew what it was like on the other side. Right. Oh, that's so helpful. So Amy, for you, when did you know you were done working for somebody else and you just had to try going out on your own? Oh, so it was actually a very pivotal moment. Some people like know in a moment, some people kind of spreads out over time. I think for me, I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. We didn't talk about like, I'm going to own my own business no. someday. Like that wasn't part of my fiber. 
However, I was unhappy. I was working long hours. We had just gotten married. I wanted to see my husband more and I was on the road a lot because this is an event company. So um, I, Tony had a meeting where he brought in a bunch of business owners to the San Diego office and they were all sitting around this big table and Tony was going to ask them about their businesses and what it looked like and all that. And they were in different walks of life, like relationship building, real estate investments, all these different things, but they all were their own bosses and they all were doing business online. I was brought into the meeting to take notes. So that's how humbling it was. So here I am at a side table taking notes and Tony went around and asked him about their work and all I heard was freedom. They were working when they wanted, where they wanted, how they wanted. They weren't on someone else's time or someone else's dime. And I thought, I don't know what these guys are doing. I've never thought about being my own boss, but I want a piece of it. So it was that moment that I realized I'm tired. I feel like I need to move on. I need to do something different, but I don't want a boss anymore. I want freedom. And that was the moment. It took about a year till I actually went out on my own, but that was the moment that I knew I needed something different. So did you start talking about it to Hobie at that point? Or how did you bring up the conversation? Like, I have this crazy idea. I want to leave my cushy nine to five and all the benefits and just do the thing. I think I think you were instant. I I think the moment she came back from that, she was already talking about it, that there's something better. She knows in her heart there was something better. I knew it. I you could see the fire the set the day that it happened. I knew I knew the day it happened. When she goes to tell the story, I always laugh because I I I knew the moment she knew. I mean hours later that evening, but same day. Yeah, I think I did start talking. Some fire was lit and I don't know why. It must have always been there that I wanted to do something different and on my own, but I was so scared to even verbalize it. But then in that meeting, I was like, game on. We're going to figure this out. So like I fast tracked it in the sense of I asked to move to the marketing department. I asked to work on launches because I wanted to do all the stuff that these guys were doing. And I'd been in the company so long, I got a bunch of yeses, but I started working toward it right away I had here's what's important to know though I had no idea what I would do on my own I did not have that figured out at all right no, no. like no clue I like maybe I was a step I'm a stepmom to uh, Cade our son and I thought well maybe I could like work with stepmoms or maybe I could do this or that I had no clue I just wanted it bad that's awesome so Hobie were you supportive right from the right right from the yeah, right, get-go right, or did you have right to kind of work yourself up no, a little it didn't, to me it, it it was a no-brainer for me because she she was traveling a lot yeah and that was something that we were worried about in our relationship is that we still we wanted to be together like i didn't and we were newly I mean, married she was constantly it felt like every week london australia like all over the which place. sounds amazing and fun <laughs> but when you're in a conference center and you never even see the city it feels like you could be anywhere so it wasn't super glamorous yeah. but yeah But here's the thing, I work with a lot of students that their spouse is not supportive. And it's not because they don't believe in the other person, it's they're terrified. Uh, We needed two incomes at the time. And so not making money is a big deal. And so a lot of spouses are like, I love you, but please don't do that. You're gonna put our family at jeopardy. Hobie's a dreamer, I'm a realist, so he's gonna support. If I told you I wanted to land on the moon, you'd be like, okay, how are we gonna make it happen? And I'd be like, tell you all the reasons why it's not going to work. So I probably, if Hobie came to me and said, oh, well, you came to me and said, I don't want to be a contractor anymore. He wants to be a firefighter. And he was older. And I remember being very nervous. I was very excited, but very nervous. But you didn't have any of that for me. So I think Mm -hmm. it's our personalities that play into that. That's really interesting. Well, I know in your book, Two Weeks Notice, you give some fantastic advice for how to kind of start that conversation with your significant other or whoever's going to support you. But can you give some of those here? Like, what do you suggest? How do, how do you bring that up? Ooh, this is good. I'll, I'll give one and okay. you give one. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you want to leave your nine to five and actually be your own boss, which means you no longer have security, you don't have that paycheck every other week. I think the first thing you've got to do is share with your partner what it means to you. Not exactly what you're gonna do or how you're gonna make money or all the logistics, but share your heart. 
For me, I went to Hobie and said, I am so unhappy. I want to be home more. I want to be more present. I don't want someone telling me what to do. And I have this deep desire to go out on my own. And so when I shared my heart with him and why it was important to me, he got on board really quickly. And I think that part is important before you tell him all the ways you're going to do it. Also, a lot of people who want to start their own business, they've had some false starts along the way. So they're going to start to think, well, I've tried this before and my partner is going to be like, again, we're going to go down this road again. But you have to keep going and going until it works. So you have to forgive yourself for the things that didn't work out because there's going to be that one time that it's going to click. But for you, what advice would you give, especially for the, the spouses that don't necessarily like aren't 100 percent on board yet? I, I think it's you got to be really inclusive with each other. I, I think to me, that's the biggest thing you can't. I think if Amy had approached to me and said, this is what I was going to do, I don't think I would have been as receptive to it. It was more we sat down. She talked about all the things she was unhappy about, what she had just been exposed to that she was super interested in. Could we do it like there was never a part of this that I didn't feel like it was mm. us together doing it. Oh, it wasn't yeah. like she came and said, this is what I'm going to do. Cause I, I'd like to think I'd be supportive in that way, but I, I'm not sure that would be tough if you came to me and said it that way. So I, I think you gotta be really inclusive with one another about this is what I'm thinking. What do you think about it? And that's kind of how she presented it to me. I, I felt part very, of it. very much from the beginning. Okay. This is you're almost asking me for my approval. And that was different than telling me what you were going to do. Okay, so I got to be careful. I didn't ask for his approval. I yeah, asked, I, could I he get know. on board with me as a feminist? Yeah. That's a hard word for me. Yeah. But really quickly, I want to say something. Um, one of the things that is interesting about Hobie and I's marriage and my success in my business is that you feel deeply tell me if i'm wrong but you've said this to me before you feel like you were part of this like you might not have worked in the business but i've shared enough i've asked your opinion i've gotten your feedback enough that my success feels like your success would you agree with 100 percent. and that's very i didn't know that until he shared that with me but he's never been uh, uh jealous of my success or resentful of all the time i spend in the business or anything like that because he says he feels like he's been part of it from day one and I don't know how we did that, but I know it was part of our, our journey. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's a big part of I mean, I hate to use that term, but staying in your lane. Uh -huh. Like I, I didn't know the things that she was specifically doing in the business, but I know things outside of that. So when yeah. she would bounce things off of me, I could give her a whole different perspective, yeah. not, not on how to do business as right. much as dealing with people how or dealing with things. situations. And yeah. and I think that was that was big. I didn't try to, when she told me she didn't need a savior, which is hard as a male not to <laughs> yeah. want to try to fix everything. That was when it was like, okay, I got to approach this different. It's, it's a big change for two people. Yeah. Not, not the person, just the person doing it. Both yeah. people yeah. have got to go through a major life change. In the family. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really great distinction. I love that you brought that up so clearly because that it really is true. It's like, your spouse doesn't have to be passionate and working in your business all the time to feel like a part of it when you're sharing with them kind of the goings on and your feelings about it and letting them really experience the journey with you and not just like being tugged along behind you, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. such a good way to put it. For sure. Yeah. So I, I, that, I work with couples on this all the time. So I love that. Like I've worked with, um, you know, spouses of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who feel like they're being dragged through the mud blindfolded, right? Because it's mm -hmm. like their business, their decisions, they have nothing to say about it. And they're just waiting for the next whatever to happen. Right. And so I like the way you put it, that you talked about it and you were in it together. And it wasn't something that, you know, Amy was just like, here's what I'm going to do. And you were like, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I really wanted his buy-in because I knew I was going to need him. If if nothing else, although he's been a huge support in so many ways emotionally. Yeah. Like he became my biggest cheerleader, but I think you're right. It's because I I definitely we included each other in on the whole thing from day one. So, it makes a difference.
Oh, love that. So great. Well, I want to talk about the book for a minute, which I loved, by the way. It was Thank so you. like, oh, it was so Amy. I felt like when I was reading it, I've been following you for so long. And I, like, I felt like the whole time I was reading this book, we were just sitting at coffee and I was getting advice oh, from a good huge friend. Huge compliment. Thank you for that. Oh, it's so crazy. But I know all of the emotions that go into writing. Well, I kind of, I'm in the very beginning stages of writing my own book. So I know right. it can be like, you know, you've got this extreme fear all the way to this confidence. Like, I know what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, what have I done? Like just <laughs> crazy roller coaster of emotions. Um, but what are some of the things that Hobie did during the writing process that were most helpful to you? I love this question. He was an absolute sounding board. How many times did I walk downstairs and tell you this isn't going to work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we like, can count. Right? <laughs> like millions. I really doubted my ability to write this book. I'm not a fast writer. I'm not a great writer. She's a great writer. But thank you, babes. But I had a story to tell. And I wrote this book. So I wrote this book because I knew that these were all the things I wish I would have known when before I quit my corporate job. I wish someone would have given me the guidebook for how to start a business. And so I knew why it was so important, but it was so difficult. So I'd go downstairs and I'm like, I can't do this. And he was just like, what yeah. would you do? Sit down. Yeah. What, what is it that you think you can't do? Yeah. Like what, what is going on that you don't think you can do it? We'd talk it out all yeah. the time. Hobie is absolutely my sounding board. If you ask Hobie, how much is a CPL to run an ad to a landing page? He would not know that. But if you sit down and say, I can't get past this because what if people think this or that, or what if I make the wrong move? He knows me so well. That's why I love that we're making this interview because your spouse or your partner, they love you and they want the best for you. So allow them to give you that insight and guidance because without you, I don't know if I ever told you this, but that book would have never been written. Well, you know this because I dedicated it to you. <laughs> We'd have a quick quick little story. Um, uh, Hobie does not read books. He'll listen to audio books and we'll listen to things online, but he's not a big reader, sit down and read a book. And I went away for the weekend and my uh, car, an, uh, a galley came in the mail and it was sitting on the kitchen table and I came home from that weekend and he said, I read every page. And I'm thinking, no, he did not. He's like I read every page. I was trying to be this big supportive husband and but I'm I, like, I'm gonna read every bit of this book while she's gone. But I like, didn't want him to read it because I dedicated the book to him and I wanted it on video when he realized I dedicated the book, but everything doesn't need to be on video. And he said to me, I can't believe you dedicated that book to me. And it was like, of course I did, because I wouldn't be where I am today without you supporting me every step of the way. And mm -hmm. for the record, he really did read every page because he references things that I'm like, how do you know that? So, <laughs> He's quoting it now. I love it. Yeah. Oh, that makes me so happy. Amy, what are you most grateful for in this whole journey, entrepreneurship, writing a book, all of the things? What are you most grateful for? You know, I'm not just saying this just because he's sitting here, but I wouldn't have the marriage I had to today, I don't think, if I weren't an entrepreneur. Because what has given me, although all the ups and downs and all the challenges that this man has been with me every step of the way, and I talk a lot about them in the book, but I also know that I get to choose my schedule. I get to choose how I live my life. And we get to do that together. And we have a beautiful marriage, not perfect, but a beautiful marriage. And I do believe that entrepreneurship, giving us the freedom to do what we want has been everything to us. Yeah, don't you think? Everything. I mean, I just, the fact that he, Hobie used to be a firefighter before he retired when we moved to Nashville and he was gone every other day, 24 hours at a time. And so I know the value, uh, I know how important it is to spend time with your loved ones and have that, but I get to be present with him because I'm not on someone else's time or someone else's dime. So I do believe that the best gift entrepreneurship gave me was uh, the opportunity to have a beautiful marriage. I really, I appreciate you asking that because I never got to say that before. Yeah, well, that's perfect because to be true, the statistics show that entrepreneurial couples actually have a higher divorce rate than really? nine to fivers. It's true. So. And, and that's specifically who I work with. So this question is for Hobie, because I know you really like your Amy time mm -hmm. and having her undivided attention. I've heard, you know, many, many stories about, about this. Wait, I have to tell you last night we were laying in bed and I said, what's one thing I could do to make you happier? 
And what did you say? I love that question. <laughs> more, more me time. He just, just wants me to spend more time with them. That's all this man needs and wants. So I love that you're asking this question. Oh, good. Well, I want to know what systems, rituals, or routines have you put in place to make sure that you're still connecting, even in the big pushes like this book launch and things that are just really busy? Well, we do. It's been a little bit more difficult lately, but we do coffee in the morning. So when we get up, we sit down, we have coffee, phones down, we sit and we talk. That's 30 minutes. Yeah, it's usually a full 30 minutes yeah. of us hanging out. And then I think that like the communication part of it, ritual wise, if we're angry at one another, we kind of made a deal, I'd say within the last five years, probably that we talk about what it is, because mm -hmm. we have to remind each other all the time that we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. Not, not all the time. But when we're having an issue with one another, if we sit down and talk about it, it's amazing. The issue's not as big as we thought it was. So I, I think that communication, like we communicate every day. Yeah. Pretty right. Like, like, how are you doing? How, and, and the we hard sincerely check in. Yeah. I think the hard conversations are so important to have as much as we don't want to have them. Um, but I also want to kind of piggyback on that, that I know Hobie's love language and he knows mine. I know his is quality time. He knows mine is acts of service. And so because we know that we can kind of build that into our rituals. Like I don't necessarily have time every morning for 30 minute coffee, but I also know that it means a lot to him. So the more we can do it, the better. So um, I love that question though, because rituals and habits between couples, I really do think it makes a huge difference in the yeah. entrepreneur life. Yeah. And you just give a, gave a great plug for what I call daily connection. So I teach that to my couples. Oh, 20 I love minutes. That. So I love, I love that you have 30, but 20 minutes a day of your undivided attention yes. is so, so crucial. You have okay. To. Last wrapping up questions, Amy, if, if you had the undivided attention of all the aspiring entrepreneurs out there for just a few moments, what's the best advice you could give them about unbossing and going after their dreams? Oh, unbossing, one of my most favorite terms, this ability to believe that you are capable to lead yourself and you do not need anyone else to do it. I think the advice I would give is you have to believe that you can lead yourself. You have to look for proof. You have to believe it before you even see it. But at the same time, confide in two or three people to be your people, your accountability partner, the people that will pull you through when you are knocked down because entrepreneurship is beautiful and difficult and messy and all of that at the same time. And so l allowing or letting Hobie in, even when it seems like I'm just like, I can do this, I can figure it out, but letting him in and, and taking his insight is huge. So I let a few people in in the early days. I didn't tell everybody what I was going to be doing because most people wouldn't understand but a few people, the best advice I can do or give is find your people, let them in, let them support you along the way. Oh, so good. Okay, Hobie, if you had the undivided attention of all the entrepreneurial spouses out oh, there, I love that. What is the best advice you could give them about how to love and support their partner on this wild journey? First, try not to make it about you. Mm. That's that would be the first thing. I think it's I think being a spouse of an entrepreneur, what is difficult is you're going to have to really give up a little more of yourself than I think a normal relationship has to. I, not, not always, not necessarily that, in a though. terrible way, but I mean, it's more about like, it's not about you. Most of the time, something that they're going through, they're trying to figure out their self-worth, they're trying to figure out did they make a mistake or should they quit? And it's, it has nothing to do with us. And, and I think that that's the biggest thing. Don't make things about you. It's not very rarely is it ever about you. That would be probably the biggest thing as mm -hmm. a spouse. I love that. And also I will say when you're starting a business, when you become an entrepreneur, when you build a business, it is a lot about you. Like my whole world had turned upside down. And so for him to not be selfish and instead say, we're going to make it about you right now. We're going to focus on this. We're going to get this off the ground. That's huge. That's exactly what I needed. So I think sometimes getting things started does feel a little selfish for the entrepreneur. So to have a spouse that says, I get it, we'll, we'll go through this phase together is pretty beautiful. Yeah, I've always huh. had, there's, there's, a, I've, there's a belief I always had, and it's don't quit five minutes before the miracle happens. And I think that's kind of the not making it personal about you. So I, I really think that it's going to pay off. You just have to hang on.
Yeah. Like it, it'll pay off. Hang on tight because it takes a little while to get going. Yeah, it's not <laughs> roses and sunshine right out of the gate. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Amy and Hobie, you guys are both so beautiful. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I cannot wait for the launch, the official two weeks notice. Please tell everybody how they can get their hands on a copy. Thank you so much for asking. So if you go to twoweeksnoticebook.com, all the details of where you can get it and the bonuses when you order and all that good stuff. So twoweeksnoticebook.com. Thanks so much for asking. Hooray. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. To learn more ways to deepen your intimacy and strengthen your relationship, make sure you watch this video next.